As I look out upon the distance, I reflect upon the past three hours of my life where I failed to get my NVIDIA graphics card running on my new computer. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to me taking a break from doing what I just said. Last time, we recorded the melodies of two Your Sanctuary locations after taking out two bosses. This time, we're going to be going to Summers so that we can go to Skaraba. But first, these are our levels. Ness is level 46, Paula is 42, Jeff is 41, and Pooh is 36. So, they are amazingly powerful. Like, seriously. This is crazy how powerful they are. And they're going to be getting a lot more powerful in this episode because I will be able to get some new equipment for them, including one piece, which I'm... Well, not one piece, but one piece of equipment that I'm extremely happy about getting because it ha will fix a problem that I've had it with Ness for a long time. But I will discuss that when we get there because I need to go to Summer so that we can go to Toto so that we can go to Scraba. Here we are. This is Toto. We've been here before. Nothing has changed. Go to Scrava, you need to cross the sea. However, a monster named Kraken lives in the open sea. He attacks ships that pass through. Are you scared? Like, I think I've answered that before, but uh, apparently I never got this camera guy location. Okay. Hey, man. Pictures taken instantaneously. I'm a photographic genius. If I decide to... Oh, wait, sorry. He's not an auctioneer on today. He's only an au auctioneer on Thursdays, which it would be two days ago but when this is released. Okay, we got a picture. Now let's go. There are a couple things that I have been putting off. There's, there's in fact, uh, another camera guy location in Onnet that I'm think I know of right now. Um, but it requires us spending some money, and I'd rather do that in an episode where I can get away with it. You made my wife wake up. She quit talking about all that serious garbage. Yeah, let's work hard. If you're courageous, get on this boat. You'll probably see the Kraken and experience getting seasick. After all, it could only cost you your life, and you got that for free. Luck will determine the outcome of this voyage. So, do you want to sail the seas to Scraba? 20 bucks per person is fine with me. Ready? We're reckless, baby. Bon voyage. This guy seems like a cheery chap. I mean, he has a good outlook on life. And by good outlook on life, I mean he's fine with getting rid of it because he got it for free. So we've traveled by land via our legs. We've traveled by air via the Skyrunner. And now... We're traveling by sea, because we can. So Ness, uh, a 13-year-old boy who had formerly never left his ho hometown, is traveling the world. He's getting to see the sights. And I think that's really what Earthbound is all about. It's not about defeating the evil. It's not about, well, I, it's partially about gaining the new friends of Paula, Jeff, and Pooh. But it's about seeing the world and exploring what quirky characters the world has spawned. Wait, wait, wait. I, I need to stop the boat. It's been a long time since I was out on the open sea, so I feel seasick. Oh man, what am I going to do? A sailor who gets seasick? So how come you guys are alright? So that bald guy over there. Your buddy, right? He came from Delam? You guys must be quite the adventurers. Ha ha ha, I'm feeling much better now. Anchors away! This guy seems like a genuinely cheery bloke. Like, he's the kind of guy that you'd meet on the street, and without having no known him prior, you'd feel like you're the best of pals, your childhood friends. In fact, I think I should give this guy a name. He's so cheery and... bumpity? I don't know. He's... he's bouncy, I guess, is if that's a word. I'm going to name him Archibald Bunker Hill, because that should be his name. So here it comes! And since we've made a new friend in Archibald Bunker Hill, it's our job to protect him. So, just like with any boss, uh, our strongest attacks will be our friends. The Kraken has a couple of attacks that I don't want to see, mainly a fire attack. It's essentially PSI Freeze Beta, and it will insta-kill two of the members of our group, Paula and Pooh. So, I'm hoping that we don't see that. I don't have any bottle rockets right now, so I'm just going to use the Hungry HP Sucker and uh, some PSI Freezes. The good thing about this is because I have two PSI Freeze Gammas, there's a gigantic chance that he'll be solidified before he can do anything. So let's hope that that happens. Paul tried PSI Freeze Gamma. Please freeze him. 
does a lot of damage. It does freeze him. Good. Hopefully, he won't be able to attack at all. That would be a good thing. Freeze beta, or I mean gamma again. Probably won't solidify him twice because that's not a thing. And rock and beta comes out. So, this is my problem with Ness. Should the Kraken use his fire attack, Ness will be going last, meaning he will be unable to save anyone in the group, regardless of how, f how fast I am on the, uh, on the healing, on the menus, I mean. So, that's my problem. He's going last, so he's not able to heal anyone. So, I'm hoping to fix that, because there's an item in Scrubba that gives some speed, and that should be able to fix Ness's problem. But I've had this problem with Ness for a long time. I just haven't talked about it until this episode, because, really, what would I do about it other than complain? There's no item other than, gr than the g yeah. There's no other item other than the Great Charm that gives speed, and so it would just be a problem that I continually complain about. Okay, hopefully he's not able to use his attack. Did not solidify him. He can still attack, unless I kill him this turn. Still possible. And I did! Okay, that was very easy. Uh, 19,000 experience each. Poo's level is now 37. A defense one by one, HP one by one, PP one by two. Oh man, I thought you guys were just everyday little kids. But you defeated the Kraken. I also helped in the battle. I threw my slippers at the beast. Maybe you didn't notice. Good old Archibald Bunker Hill. Always throwing these slippers at people. <laughs> that doesn't seem like a good thing, honestly. So we found his one character flaw, which means nothing he can do from here on out will take him by surprise. Take us by surprise. So he can only help us. So out of the seas of periwinkle and purple come the city of acceptance, the city of change, the city of sand, Skaraba. Come now, and stay forever. Also, that was a really weird freeze. It, the game had to load in. Did you come from Toto by ship? There's a scary monster in the sea. Did you beat him, or did you escape? Either way, you are fantastic. This is Scaraba. Like I said, the city made of sand. This building is, is the hospital, which thankfully I survived the battle with the Kraken, so I don't need to frequent the hospital. This place is... Let's see, what is it? It's a place with Gandalf, apparently. Uh, Gandalf. No, I don't want any mummy bandages. No soliciting allowed, please. Okay, so Gandalf doesn't want us. Uh, what about this guy? The guy that climbs ropes. I'm doing this as a hobby. Isn't it cool? I recently made a friend. He used to be a dungeon maker, and now he's a dungeon man. Would you like to meet him? Uh, sure. Alrighty then. I'll give you the key so that you can enter him. Oh no, I don't have it. I must have lost it somewhere. I'm sorry, I don't worry about small things. Okay, so we meet a guy who considers losing his friends a small thing. Okay. Oh, be careful where you walk. It's filthy. A chubby kid did his business out here somewhere. Well, his business is right here. These two black specks. Pokey stink still hangs in the air. So we can... F there are signs of Pokey's... Huh, presence everywhere. Yeah, that was a bad pun. Okay, uh, let's use healing alpha on poo. One thing I found, uh, when I went back to Dusty Dune Desert to find that criminal caterpillar, poo would, like, get sunstroke every couple of seconds, where the rest of the party didn't. I wonder if poo's just more susceptible to it. Uh, let's see. This place is a place... Let's go in here. I want to talk to the people first before I do any purchasing, because that way I can space out the video a little bit better. I've never seen you around here. What do you want? I do not have anything you would want. Okay, so the people seem very closed off to visitors. The Tenda tribe used to live here. They went to the back of, de of the deep darkness, as they were too innocent. I wonder if they are still alive. So, the Tenda tribe. A name to remember for later. Uh, this is the hotel. Nothing worthwhile mentioning here other than the fact that at the very back is the famous contraband dealer. And he sells nothing much, just the standard fare, uh, bomb, super bomb, bottle rockets, and big bottle rockets. So I'll probably be, be frequenting him later. I just want to point out that he is indeed here. And now I think we've talked to everyone other than the people in the market, so uh, I'm going to frequent the market. I'll, I'll start with the people that I don't really want to purchase from because I don't want to purchase from them, and then I'll work down to the meat and potatoes. Okay, let's talk to you. Snakes are unpleasant, but also, but so cute. Oh, 
I don't know what I may be saying. Snakes are kind of cute. Should I keep a snake at home? Perhaps I should asp an, esp an expert. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh. Uh. <clears throat> sorry. Poisonous snakes cost more. Why would a fine young man like you need one? Okay, so I can guess that this guy is the snake dealer? Yeah, he is. Okay. Funny thing about the viper he sells it, is it will always poison enemies. So, I mean, if you want to have access to poison, just get a viper, I guess. Okay, so this is the... This is the, whatchamacallit, condiment dealer, okay? Now, I do want to visit the con condiments later because Paula got the rock candy, or I got the rock candy, last episode. And like I said, that will increase one stat at random. So if you use this with sugar pa packets in your inventory, with the rock candy on the top of your inventory, you can use it infinitely in battle to increase stats forever. Which is pretty neat. It's a pretty cool secret. Many people think it's a secret. Some people think it's a bug. Uh, no one knows for sure. I bought a piggy nose. This will help out a, a large amount while I am humbly searching for the magic truffle in the deep darkness. You too can learn how to use a piggy nose with the use command under goods. So please rest easy. Okay, what do you say? Mark bad luck? Oh, don't, no, don't worry. If you want to know, I'll humbly tell you. You shall come back here after you've encountered a dangerous situation. However, I may be wrong, and if so, a thousand pardons. Okay, this guy, a snake bag can hold... Okay, he has a snake bag, which is a multi-use item that has snakes. Uh, hello there, welcome to my own escape a scoop a doo bop uh, This guy carries food, and now, for the man. This is the man. He has a French mustache, and he's also the man. He has stuff. Let me look at his menu. It's, it sounds like he's selling food, but he's really only selling one food item, that is the piggy nose, which I'll, exp uh, I'll explain it right now. Uh, random areas in Earthbound, you can use the piggy nose and find magic truffles, which is a pretty good thing. So you're essentially buying uh, magic truffles for $300 a piece, which is a pretty good price considering how much money I have right now. So, I will cut ahead to when I buy a bunch of items, because there are a bunch of items I would like to buy. Uh, and I'll cut after I deal with this camera guy. Can you please just take my picture? I will not be short with you because I know that it'll all be worth it in the end. What a great photograph. It'll always bring back the fondest memories. Away I go! Alright, let's cut ahead to when I have acquired a bunch of items. Working through the night, Jeff fixed the broken cannon. After being fixed, the broken cannon became the Spectrum Beam! Ba-da-ba, ba ba da ba, ba, ba da <laughs> I have no idea what that was, but that seems to be a running theme where I have no clue what I'm doing, which... <laughs> if my trials and tribulations with my computer's graphics card has any indication, I literally have no clue what I'm doing. Sad face. Okay, well, from that guy, I got the broken cannon, which upgrades into the spectrum beam once Jeff has... 39 IQ, I believe? No, 31. Yeah, if I'm wrong, like always, I'll put it on screen right... Boop, right there. Spectrum Beam, it does stuff. So, I did a lot of things with my inventory. Let's start with Ness. He now has the Platinum Band, which gives 40 defense. Now, the um, the Diamond Bands in Summers are actually better than the Platinum Band, uh, but only by 10 defense, and this costs, the Platinum Band costs $4,000, and gives 40 defense, and the Diamond Band costs $10,000, and gives 50. It's pretty obvious that the Platinum Band is actually more cost effective. Uh, I also got a new charm for Ness. He has the Crystal Charm, which only gives 2 defense, but it gives 15 speed. So that complaint I had about Ness earlier this episode, where he about him being really slow, is now gone. Because he is now the... He's tied for being the fastest member in the group with Paula. It's pretty cool. Now the healer can actually save people. I'm a big fan of that. Um, also, his night charm I gave to Paula so that her defense is now pretty high, so she's no longer as squishy as she was. In fact, her defense is only one less than Ness. And I, I did find something out while I was perusing the stats. Jeff has the highest defense in the group, 
So that's kind of interesting. He's technically the tankiest, although he doesn't have as much HP as Ness does, so he's technically not not as tanky. Uh, as for Paula's items, she also has the Platinum Band. Um, she got the Knight Pendant, like I said. She's still holding onto the Mr. Saturn coin because it still stands up. Um, and Jeff, his change besides getting the Spectrum Beam is he now has a bunch of Bottle Rockets. That's, that's it. Uh, there's no change in Pooh's inventory other than the fact that I got rid of the bottles of water because I'm going to be getting access to a better item than the bottles of water. Please allow me to read you from the local newspaper, the Scaraba Paperus. Kraken, the evil sea monster, is now gone forever. Well, there is some news here to read about. Okay, uh, let's, let's not talk to you. Okay, now to wrap up my dealings in Scrubba, I would like to deposit uh, most of my money back into the bank, as usual. Or mess up, like I always do, on the thing. Okay, enter amount. Good, okay. So, let's do 10, and let's keep $2,000 on my person. 50 and... Five. Yeah, let's keep $2,000 because there is, in fact, a shop coming up that I would like to frequent. Okay, uh, let's call Escargo Express so he can pick up the Hyper Beam because I can't get rid of that normally. Okay, pick up something. Yes. So he'll come along and he'll pick up stuff, and now we can head into the desert, which is pretty neat. So, the Desert of Scraba. It's right down here. Um, just going in, in here, I would like to talk about something while he this guy comes uh there is an enemy that can spawn right outside the city gates it is the master criminal caterpillar now this enemy is worth noting because he uh defeating him gives the highest amount of experience of any enemy in the entire game it gives about 86,000 experience which is pretty cool and i would like to actually show this off because like i said you can only find this enemy here and it gives a lot of experience. So, allow me to make some enemies spawn here. I'll try it a couple times on screen, then I will cut to it. The easiest way I've found is to just go into these trees, then go over here. If that doesn't work, then go inside the city, let things despawn, and then go back into the desert. Pretty good, effective way of doing things. Avoid the UFOs because they will cause trouble. Uh, this is the highest spawn rate area for doing this. So, let me cut ahead to doing this. There he is, there he is, there he is, the criminal caterpillar. Oh boy, I found him. Okay, it only took me like two minutes as well. And he got stuck on a tree, wonderful. Get a green swirl, we'll probably insta-kill him, I did. And that's a lot of experience, and it only took me two minutes to get it. Ness's level is now 47, offense 1 by 1, vitality 1 by 1, IQ 1 by 1, HP 1 by 13, PP 1 by 3, Paul's level is now 43, offense 1 by 1, speed 1 by 1, IQ 1 by 1, HP 1 by 3, PP 1 by 4. Pooh's level is now 38. Oh baby, offense 1 by 3, defense 1 by 1, luck 1 by 1, HP 1 by 3. That was great. That was really good. And like I said, that only took me like a minute and a half, two minutes, so. I mean, if you want to grind, this is not a horrible place to do so. You have access to a hotel right there, so you can just heal up, and it's actually pretty easy. Okay, I, I don't think I'm gonna find another one, uh, but I'm just kind of, <laughs> I'm just kind of stalling so that I, I kind of want to bump into one. I really doubt I will, but I'll try one more time. Okay, well, I tried a couple more times, and it didn't work, which is funny, because I'm like, I'm gonna try one more time, but actually I spent, like, another minute, because I really wanted to find one, but it looks like that's not going to happen. Okay, let's use Healing Alpha on Poo, and get rid of that Sunstroke, and just walk south east is the, yeah, that's the direction. And talk to this guy. There are no random, there are no presents uh, anywhere in this desert. I've looked on the map, there are none. So just doing story things, it's it's the way to go. Uh, I yeah, These are the bottles of DX water, which gave a lot more PP to Poo. So I'm going to buy a couple for him. That's one of the reasons why I took this money with me. So let's get this bottle of DX water. I wonder what bottle, of, what is so special bottle of, yeah. Can't talk, wow. I wonder what's so special about b the bottles of DX water. Like, is it <laughs> alcoholic? Is it energized? Does it have caffeine in it? I don't know. Okay, let's just get one more and give Pooh essentially a lot of pee-pee. Awesome. Now let's examine it and see how much pee-pee it really gives. I got it wrong with the bottle of water last time. I said that it gives like 20 pee-pee, but in reality it gives 10, so that's kind of sad. 
Very expensive water, but almost the same as the water you drink in town. It recovers PP a little bit. It says that, but it really means it re recovers a little bit of PP to the party. But it it gives a lot of PP to Jeff. Okay. This is the Sphinx. And hopefully if this UFO does not attack me, I can do its thing. Are you a thief, a warrior, or one who has come to see my majesty? You must decide what you really are. Therefore, what will you do? Uh, first off, I will try to get that enemy to despawn because it will attack me on here. Uh, there, it's gone. Now, if you remember, the hieroglyphic copy that we got uh, talked about a combination. And I believe that this is it, out of memory. Uh, looks like I, oh, my memory is good. Good. Awesome. Dance in front of the Sphinx. Warriors, enter now. Search for the Hawkeye. Awesome. Now we can go inside. Very easy puzzle. Uh, but first, we'll get another camera guy location. What is this, like the third in the episode? It's kind of crazy. Pictures taken instantaneously. I'm a photographic genius if I do say so myself. Okay, get rid of the ski ba doo da I should do a different accent for him. Wow, what a great photograph! It will always bring back the fondest of memories. Now I will fly away and drink my tea and my pickle sandwiches to the queen. Alright, so the pyramid is a dungeon. Now, one problem with this dungeon is that certain enemies will always spawn in certain places, like the enemies on the walls. There are none here, but you will see them short enough. Uh, the arachnids. My best suggestion is to just use bash attacks against these guys. They're not too hard. Uh, maybe PSI fire. Why not? Um, Jeff, go ahead and use your hungry HP sucker and poo. Bash, why not? These guys are pretty easy, so I don't think I need to worry about the arachnids! Uh, the arachnid A and the arachnid B. Although they do, they can poison you, which is problematic, but it's not that big of an inconvenience. Okay, they're still alive. Maybe, maybe I downplayed this just a little bit too much. Okay, let's use this, this, this on you. And you have, you use that, and you do the thing over here. Pretty easy. Let's just use our standard fare, which is kind of new because we haven't been able to use standard fare in a couple of episodes because we've been fighting bosses. So, for those who don't know, standard fare is P PSI Freeze Alpha because it's such a w it's such a cheap attack, but it does so much damage. Jeff's level is now 42. The secret of life once again. Speed one by one. IQ one by one. HP one by two. I really want to be seeing those uh, those IQ went up by ones because once it reaches 45, so maybe five more level ups, he he will be able to get access to the broken bazooka. Uh, let's see, or the heavy bazooka rather. Let's do this on you, and then let's do this on you. If you don't want to deal with the PB cost of healing um, healing beta, then there's a guy in the bazaar that sells. Whatchamacallit, he sells vials of serum, which will cure poison, so that's pretty neat. Okay, let's try to avoid these enemies right here, hopefully. Can I avoid them? Will they spawn again? Okay, that's a different enemy. Uh, let's, let's fight it. It's a mummy. Interesting. We haven't fought one of these sprites before, and usually they like to reuse them, so this is a new sprite. I mean, this, per this one in game, or in battle, is a reused one from the Shattered Man, but... Uh, still, it was a, a, re, a, yeah, a new overworld sprite. I cannot talk, which is annoying. Let's just kill it with ice, not fire. Because fire seems counterintuitive because these guys live in a hot environment. This should be able to kill them pretty quickly, though. Maybe in the first turn? Yeah. It, I think it was actually easier than the original Shattered Man. Awesome. Now, these wall murals will come to life. Um, some of them in certain rooms will move. I believe this is a room. Yep. Yep, that guy moved. <coughs> Sorry, I don't normally cough during episodes. Uh, but this this is kind of an annoying thing. Because the wall hieroglyphs will always spawn in rooms. They're not enemies that you can just cycle them off screen and they will despawn. They always spawn in the same place. So if you just go through a room that you've already cleared out, the enemies will return 100% guarantee, which is very, very annoying. It is a super annoying thing, but it's true. It happens. Uh, no, no, no. You use the, uh, the thing, and you use the thing. 
They aren't that difficult, though they can inflict colds, which are more trouble than anything. It's just, they're annoyances. They're not difficult, they're just annoying. Let loose a hacking cough, and Paula caught a cold. Okay, so it's probably going to die in the next turn. Now, after we fight this one, I will cut out future battles with the uh, Guardian Hieroglyphs and any other enemies that are similar. Just because it's it's annoying for you guys to have to go through the same battles over and over. And really, what am I going to say during these? I could just say, we'll use PSI Frieza, we're going to sneeze. I could just say what's going on, but it's kind of redundant to keep facing these enemies over and over. So in the future, I will cut these particular enemies out. Okay, what's in here? In here is, ta-da! The Viper! But Ness takes it. I'll probably use that in the soonest possible battle, because otherwise it's kind of useless. It does inflict poison, though I'd rather in, uh, win battles quickly. Oh boy, more enemies. Well, like I said, I'm cutting this out. Run past this guy? Yeah, I got past him. That's another thing I can do, is use the invincibility to get past enemies, although... I won't be able to avoid this enemy. Or can I? Very slowly. Very slowly. Am I real? I am! Oh, wow! You can do that? Really? That's cool! Either he spawned in an incorrect place, or I actually avoided the enemy. It looks like maybe he spawned in the incorrect place. Okay, let's try to get up on the stairs. Up. On. The stairs. Or not. How'd I get a green swirl there? Whose level is now 39. Oh, baby. Offense went up by 3. Defense went up by 2. Speed went up by 1. IQ went up by 1. HP went up by 1. PP went up by 4. Okay, let's avoid the enemies. Now, if I go to the left, there's actually something interesting up there. So, I will do that after I use healing beta on myself. Although, it looks like I'll have to fight an enemy here. So, once again, I'm cutting it out. This area is very annoying and I do not like it at all. Paul's level is now 44. Offense went up by 2. Defense went up by 1. Speed went up by 1. Vitality went up by 1. IQ went up by 1. HP went up by 8. PP went up by 5. Decent level up for Paula. Very decent. Okay, this episode may run slightly long. Um, I, I will stop when I feel like I can. Okay, let's try that thing. Uh, first, I want to use healing on Paula. Thank you. Or on Pooh, I mean. Okay, I'm going to fight him, aren't I? Yep, I am. Man! Whoa, Ness! Good job, buddy! I, I missed how big that uh, that bash tech was, but that was gigantic! Ness's level is now 48! Oh, baby! Offense 1 by 4! Oh, baby! Speed 1 by 3! Oh, baby! What is this level up? 1 up by 3! Luck 1 up by 2! HP 1 by 3! That was a fantastic level up! Seriously, Ness! You're doing great. Like, Ness is always a beast in the game, just because he has such a big level advantage, and he's using bash tax, so he doesn't have to pay for stuff. That's an enemy. Oh man, ah! So many enemies. The Petrified Royal Guard. I have a feeling that I should show this battle just because it's a new enemy. Let's defeat the Petrified Royal Guard first, use Freeze Gamma on the Petrified Royal Guard, have Jeff use the thing he always uses, the Hungry HP Sucker, which is probably my favorite item for Jeff, just because it's technically dealing, like, reverse damage. Because whenever you're, you're stealing life from an enemy, you are... Basically, it's the same as you dealing double the damage you're absorbing. So, just watch this. If this doesn't kill him instantly, it probably won't. Uh, Ness will, or stuff. Okay, as soon as Jeff uses his HP sucker... There it is. Okay, watch how much damage it deals. It deals 50, 56 and 59. That's technically 100 and like 10 to both enemies. And it's based on maximum health. So if you're fighting a boss, it's going to be absorbing 200 HP from the enemies, which is amazing. Can you picture 200 HP uh, given to Jeff? That, feels, uh, that heals him up to max. So he's technically a self-sufficient character. He doesn't rely on Jeff or Pooh to heal him. He instead just absorbs health and heals himself back up to max. So he has his own form of defense, and he doesn't need PP. So he's completely self-sufficient. That's why Jeff is so is 
one of my favorite char characters to use. I mean, Ness is okay, sure, but he has abilities that you rarely use. Like, how often have I used Flash in this Let's Play? Maybe twice? And that's not just because I don't use it, it's because half the time it's not good to use. I don't use Paralysis, because half the time it's better for him to just bash. Uh, but with Jeff, he can use his items, and he's always useful. There's nothing that he has that isn't useful at some point in the game, which is w why he's one of my favorite characters. Okay, let's get this. I believe it's a bag of Dragonite. Ta-da! It is! I should probably use one of those at some point, but I have RPG Syndrome. And enemies gangbanged me. Wonderful. Okay, after that battle, I'm going to use a bottle of DX water on Pooh so we can see just how good it really uh, is on him. Drink the bottle of DX water and he gets 32 PP. That's, that's decent. For $198, he just has a bunch of PP that he can spend. Okay, I'm just going to fight this enemy, go back to that room with the casket, or the, yeah, the casket, whatever it's called, the sarcophagus. Then I will end off the episode because I will not be able to beat the pyramid in one go. Jeff's level is now 43. Offense went up by 1, defense went up by 1, speed went up by 1, guts went up by 1, IQ went up by 1, good. HP went up by 1. Pooh's level is now 40. Now he's joining the main level set of the group. Offense went up by 2. Oh, baby! Defense went up by 4, speed went up by 2, guts went up by 1, vitality went up by 2, luck went up by 1. Sweet! Maximum HP went up by 25, PP went up by 2. Good level up, and there's still one enemy that I need to destroy. Oh, boy. Okay, well, that was a thing. Oh, boy. So many enemies in this area, and they always spawn, and it's almost impossible to avoid them. Uh, in case it wasn't obvious, I am not the biggest fan of the pyramid. It is just kind of an annoying area. But that's all I have time for this episode. Next time, we'll be going through that right door and finding out what secrets lie in the heart of the pyramid. The answer will not be pie. It will not be... 3.14159265358979 It will not be that. It will in fact be the this guy. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I release new episodes of Earthbound Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Saturdays are not long episodes. I always forget to not include that. Um, if you like this episode, then comment. If you didn't like this episode, then comment and tell me how I can make the next episode so that you would like it. And hopefully next time we won't have to fight nearly as many enemies, though I can 100% guarantee that I will be finishing out the pyramid and seeing what this place has to offer. We've heard mention of the mythical Hawkeye twice now, so it may be helpful to our cause. See you guys next time.